Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to do um, Universal Basic Income. This is actually episode 11 of our series. I want to get in a playlist so you can uh, be able to uh, watch every episode uh, as, a, as a collection of episodes and uh, uh, get this um, uh, very important information about Universal Basic Income. But this episode is going to be entitled Jack Dorsey. So this could have been <laughs> entitled anything. Um, it could have been um, it, the the idea of the video is to speak about, you know, many famous people who are involved in universal basic income, uh, more so known people. As we know, um, when people who are very influential or famous or trusted uh, advocate for certain um, topics, uh, there is a, a great deal more uh, interest in those topics and people tend to pay more attention and understand the seriousness of them and the benefits of them. And uh, um, so that's that's began to happen with universal basic income. You know, we have everybody from Elon Musk talking about it will be necessary. We have um, people like uh, Sir Richard Branson of... Um, uh, Virgin uh, uh, Records and Virgin Airlines. Um, we have uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook talking about universal basic income. Um, we have a uh, uh, world renowned economist speaking about it. We have celebrities like uh, um, um, Donald Glover, David Chappelle um, advocating for universal basic income. And the list just goes on and on and on. You can do a Google search or you'll find all these universal basic income advocates. And I think it makes a lot of sense because universal basic income uh, has been championed by some of the greatest people in history, from Dr. Martin Luther King to Thomas Paine. Uh, there's just been a host of uh, uh, great people throughout the course of uh, human history uh, who have championed this. Um, and although it's, uh, it's not a new concept or a new idea, it is uh, resurfacing as uh, a solution to many of the socioeconomic issues. And that is because uh, as we head into the 21st century, we are facing some of the worst economic challenges and potential possibilities I think we've ever had. Uh, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we were already uh, facing a looming possible recession. Uh, we were already uh, looking at automation taking more jobs and robotics revolutions. And uh, uh, so we were already in trouble. This uh, hasn't done anything to uh, help us with that problem. In fact, uh, COVID-19 kind of sped things along. So these advocates, these celebrities, these people, besides people like me talking on this video, uh, people that are trusted, great minds, people that are highly intelligent, the richest people in the world, all of these people gather to speak about this and generally when that happens, that's when it's time to take note and issue of something, especially when you see a lot of billionaires <laughs> gathering around something, something's about to go down. And universal basic income is uh, one of those things that our economy more likely is going to shift to. And you're going to see uh, universal basic income probably globally uh, being used uh, as viable economic system Um uh, that's going to be something commonplace, I believe. But there's one thing to advocate for something. There's another thing to, to really put it in motion and put your money where your mouth is. So people like Jack Dorsey, who's recently donated uh, $15 million to help cities provide guaranteed income to their residents. This is from CNBC. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey has donated $15 million to help mayors of certain cities provide guaranteed income to residents in need. The money will go to mayors for a guaranteed income, a group of about 30 cities, and it will provide each city with up to $500,000. I hope they inform federal policy in the future. Dorsey tweeted of the universal basic income pilots, right? 
And so it's very interesting. I had actually been following this story about the uh, 30 mirrors. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I can tell you right off as I've looked at uh, many different universal basic income experiments uh, and read their studies and looked at them. I think it's very, it's quite clear. And I don't think it takes a lot of, um, I don't think it, I don't think it takes a lot of uh, 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 analysis to understand that people in need, in this case, are receiving an extra $500 per month. That That's going to change their life dramatically uh, to have an extra $500 per month to deal with problems they had to deal with before they had the extra $500 a month. Uh, this is a different approach to universal basic income in a way. And what I mean by that is many of these programs that are tested and, um, you know, I have to say, like in the case with Jack Dorsey, I would be interested in some of this data, but I wouldn't fully consider all this data. And the reason I'm saying that is because I'm on the spectrum of universal basic income should be universal to everybody, rich, poor. And many times, uh, like in this particular situation, they're going with, I won't say it's not UBI, but it's a version of universal basic income that targets needy people, poor people, you know, and um, those are the people who need it the most. That is true, but that still negates what universal basic income is, Right. When you start to just give the poor people, it feels more like a welfare system. Now, that doesn't mean that people won't have the benefits of universal basic income, even if you just give it to poor or needy people, or people who really need it, as opposed to maybe giving it to richer people who are maybe going to hold it or, or something like that. But it still negates what it is. Universal basic income is across the board for everybody, no matter what, no matter what you make. And that's very important. I think in the overall ideology of universal basic income that we don't start to blur the lines and confuse it with some type of socialism or welfare system. And I think that could be difficult in dealing with economic stimulus in that way. Uh, poor people are more likely going to um, spend the money right away, you know, and that does, although that does go back into the economy, uh, you know, obviously a, a person who's uh, poor and already downtrodden, um, they're going to have a, a, a much tougher time uh, getting the results of a person who's uh, maybe using the universal business income funds for more market stimulus uh, into maybe doing other things like creating a business or starting a job or hiring more people or something like that. If you just give it to poor people, the overall effect on the economy might be a little bit different. So I'm not saying this isn't good and a good start in the right direction. I'm just saying that uh, uh, this wouldn't be the type of universal basic income I would go with. But what I am glad to see is that Jack Dorsey is actually doing something other than advocating for universal basic income. And that is he's put up $15 million, maybe others who have been as vocal about universal basic income, especially those in the tech industry who in some form or another feel that their advancement in technology and development is uh, kind of creating uh, this uh, result of uh, job displacement in the future. And so uh, they want to be part of the solution. Um, uh, the Elon Musk's, the Mark Zuckerberg birds, we'd love to see them put up you know, several hundred million dollars as well um, in these pilot type programs or any uh, program of their choosing uh, dealing with universal basic income that is, uh, according to them, going to be good in addressing the issue. So we'd love to, to see something like that uh, occur. What I think is going to happen, though, in the future, in the near future, is we're going to see many approaches and many versions of universal basic income. You have uh, versions like the uh, one in Alaska that I want to do a video on in this series um, sometime in the near future. But uh, uh, we're, we're going to see all types. Uh, the one we're involved with, Bitcoin MYK, is a, is a cryptocurrency. And um, some people might uh, not quite understand cryptocurrencies yet. They've probably heard about Bitcoin, but they're still in the process of understanding these things. 
but we believe in the near future that uh, these universal basic income projects, projects using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin MYKR project, that is this fork of Bitcoin that uses uh, uh, universal basic income in relation to creating what we believe is to be probably one of the core ideas of Bitcoin, economic prosperity, good distribution, healthy distribution, something unfortunately we aren't even seeing in Bitcoin at this time. Um, and, and so that is unfortunate. Uh, and I don't think that's really in the spirit of what Bitcoin was meant to be about. When we look through history, um, we've never seen uh, an economy that's not well distributed, meaning that uh, you've got uh, cases like what we have with over half our population uh, or, uh, or rather the 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 one percent of our population owning all over like half of all the wealth uh, that we have points to not good distribution, which historically in economics has always equaled a collapsing economy. They've always created the same signs, and uh, so there's nothing ever good about an economy that's not well distributed. Unfortunately, that happens in our cryptocurrencies. It's, ha it's happening in our standard economy. And we believe ideas like universal basic income is going to co help to correct that. And of course, cryptocurrencies was so great about them. You know, unfortunately, as we push for a lot of government universal basic income projects, which I do believe is going to be necessary uh, to uh, get this started, I do believe this is going to have to be both government effort private sector effort, blockchain effort, however you want to look at it. Um, so these things are going to all have to happen together. Unfortunately, this happening through the government, through cash, in a sense, also makes it uh, possible for the government to shut it down, government policies to... Uh, to change policies in it or new administrations to come in and get rid of it all together. Um, and so doing this over the blockchain with projects like we've created for universal basic income, you won't have that problem because these are decentralized ledgers that cannot be shut down uh, by any government or anyone. Um, and so unless you shut the entire internet off, which you know, we can factor the many issues we have with that. Um, you can sign up and register for free today. Start earn our valuable traded cryptocurrency. Uh, um, and so uh, make sure you do that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. On our website, we have live chat support. Um, but this is the way it's going. And, uh, uh, you know, so we're going to see many different approaches to universal basic income. We're going to see many uh, people we trust and advocates speaking about it. And so this is here to stay, uh, we believe. It's going to be very interesting to watch. Um, and, uh, um, you know, just going to be one of those things, I believe, that we're going to see a lot more uh, literacy on universal basic income in the middle, in the, in the future through our media, through our, uh, influencers, our content influencers, our uh, social media influencers, and a variety of people. But that's all I want to say in this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this video and share this Universal Basic Income series with uh, people across social media, especially those who are interested in social media or, I'm sorry, interested in Universal Basic Income. Uh, I think they'll uh, find some very interesting information we discuss about it. But that's all I want to say in this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe. And until next time, as always, take care.